Raymond, Maria. You are on your way, well, to Wall Street, of course, naturally. This is where all the fat cats go since, well, time immemorial. Investment bankers, this is their catnip. It allows them to feel powerful being surrounded by skyscrapers built by money they've robbed from others. And you're on your feet. You've just exited your taxi. Your assignment, as you well know, Ray, is to... And it sounds dreadfully crude that you are being asked to do this personally. Shake someone down. You said it yourself. Your job is to acquire money for the clan. To enrich them, night on night. And for some reason, you, a suit, have been chosen for the New York job. Now, in Boston, you often hear of the New York job. You're not sure whether it's the same thing every single time, but plenty of members of the clan have been sent to New York to deal with the New York job and not come back, or come back worse for wear, and then they never speak of it again. What you do know is it generally requires a large extraction of money and the visit to the ninth floor of Beavis Building, which is where you are now. Perhaps that's why you've been assigned a bodyguard in Maria. Terrific. I can hardly wait. Maria, how do you feel being in the company of this, well, Wall Street fat cat? Quite out of my element. I tried to observe him during the ride to see, like, is he a talker? Does he prefer silence? Am I supposed to act as I can be? Like a distraction? He hasn't really said much to me yet. He has complained a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Employers tend to do that. Yeah, I'm so glad they found a use for my particular talents, right? I mean, this is this is definitely the best use of my skill set. A shakedown. Well, what does your skill set contain, then? Well, Maria. It is Maria, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Have you uh, ever heard about the 16 different kinds of securities fraud? That's more what I'm into. Uh, for all intents and purposes, my family is the bank for the rest of you. We're, we're pretty much, you know, deposit, savings and loan, Fort Knox. You want money, we got money. You need more, we get more. That's what I'm into. What are you into? Protecting the family is my job. So... If you are an expert when it comes to security, then this should be no problem, after all. The doorman opens the door and gestures for the two of you to enter. Someone strides across the lobby towards you, arm outstretched, hand ready for Raymond to shake. What does he look like? Tall, grey-haired man... Circular spectacles. Mr. Milliner? That's right, Ray Milliner. I'll shake his hand. Strong grip. And who is your company? Oh, allow me to introduce Maria. She's with the firm. Ah, uh, bringing someone along for a little job experience. Wonderful. Uh, my name is Carruthers. I'm uh, not the man you were here to meet. I'm merely here to bring you to him. Uh, Ardus Enterprises often works through third parties. However, uh, it was deemed very important that we met a member of the Molina family on company ground because we need to renegotiate a deal. More will be revealed, I'm sure, by the man himself on the ninth floor. 
Come, I'll bring you to the uh, executive elevator. I'll lead the way. Now, uh, you should know, uh, Mr. Ha, uh, who is uh, the man with whom you are designated to meet, uh, has certain demands on the Milliner family. Uh, I do not know how far you have been briefed, uh, but my understanding is this can all be resolved with a minimum of fuss. I recommend just be honest. I look at him as though he's invented a new word. He takes you through a couple of suites, through to a locked office, knocks on the door. The door then opens. A small Chinese man looks up at you. Please come in. Both of you. Carruthers, you can wait outside. After you, Maria. Why, thank you. I step inside. Give the room a bit of a quick scan. The office is bedecked with some damn expensive art. You don't have to be an expert to know that. It's There's a full mural coating one wall that is not just original, but also has a Mackenzie... You recognize a name, Mackenzie... Mackenzie Thorpe. That's a very prominent artist in Boston, in fact, has painted this office's west wall. On the east, there's a lot of uh, sculptures and pieces that are uh, very emblematic of Chinese history. You don't know enough about it to know whether it's all from the same era, how many of them are true antiques or replicas. But there is an air of ostentatious wealth about this place, which is clearly deliberate. Do I see anything like additional doors, cameras? How does the desk look like? Uh, The desk is broad and made of solid wood. There's no other exit from here, just uh, one large window pane uh, that allows you to see out over the glittering lights of Wall Street. Nice. Very nice. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you appreciate it. Please take a seat. I'm sure we can be brief. Are there places to sit in this office? Two seats without backs. Hmm. Fine. I was ex- hoping for, you know, a nice butter soft leather couch or an easy chair, but... Oh, there is one against the uh, back wall if you want to take the comfortable seat. It's not facing him, but it would certainly send a message. That sounds ideal. And Maria? Um, I just take a seat. It's... I'm very used to sitting on staircases and floors while looking after kids that are running around screaming. So, I'm not picky. Besides, it puts me closer to the desk and I might want to investigate the possibility if there's like a button that he might be able to press to alert guards or something like that. So it seems like close to the desk is a good option for me. Your analysis of the room certainly comes up trumps with what you're looking for. You can see just from the basis of how the desk is shaped around him, where one of his hands rests, Yes, there is a button to summon security. Uh, You can't see any kind of recording devices here, uh, which is undoubtedly so that whatever takes place here can remain clandestine. Interesting choice of seat, Mr. Melina. Now, I should introduce myself fully. I know that you are aware you came here to meet with a representative of Ardus Enterprises. My name is Mason Ha, and I am that representative. I have a an issue, Mr. Melina, with some of the business deals that Ardus and the Melina family have entered into. We have, of course, relied upon you for a very long time for investment, for being major shareholders in the company and for your continued support we have always been very grateful whenever there has been disruption 
we have resolved it swiftly, effectively, and there has never been complaint from the ranks of your family. I'm sure you will agree. That sounds about right, Mr. Half. Do go on. <sighs> I'm glad you are in agreement. Now, here is the crux of the issue. The recent spike in share price was in no small part due to certain activities in the Middle East uh, that many of our kind are involved in. Uh, this was very fortuitous for us, and we were hoping that when the share price boomed, we would gain more milliner support uh, to show confidence in the company. We invested heavily in that region because of everything that's going on over there, and we were hoping that you would show some public backing for the company to show faith. But did we receive any dollars? No. We received not one, not one addition. In fact, we saw some withdrawals, uh, some cashing in of stock options. And I am now given to understand that the Melinas are considering cashing out entirely. Is my understanding correct? I'll shoot a warning glance at Maria. Be ready. Well, Mr. Half, those decisions are made <laughs> above my pay grade. I'm an expert in investment banking and hedge funds and various other activities that the uh, family I represent engages in on a day-to-day -day and night-to-night -night basis. You might say that uh, part of my job is to um, make sure that the dollars we have are bigger each and every night, but also I'm an expert in, uh, shall we say, accounting irregularities. Whether or not the family has determined that your investments are worthwhile could be a matter of your books. Boring stuff, but it's the stuff of big money. Maybe um, if I could have a look at your balance sheets, I could pinpoint the problem and give you some insight. Or maybe you could uh, tell me where the money's going. We have invested heavily in arms, munitions, and waste management. We believe in a diverse portfolio, Mr. Melina, and each of those has historically benefited the Melinas just as it has Artis Enterprises. We wash each other's hands, as they say. Our financial records are an open book. We do keep things very clean. We know how to keep things well, washed, shall we say. But I do not feel that that would be necessary. The reason I feel that this is a brief meeting, the reason I feel that while the Melinas may wish to withdraw their stock options and sell, 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 is not a risk to me, is because I feel Artis Enterprises, myself, that we have something... How to say this without sounding frightfully dirty. Do you mind if I'm candid? Oh, I would prefer it. <laughs> you may not be at the correct pay grade, Mr. Melina, but there is something called the promise that your family, your broader family, and I'm sure Miss, Mrs. Maria here, will have at least have heard of it, ensures a certain level of neutrality in our night-to-night -night operations. Yes, we can exchange money, yes, we can exchange guns, but no, we are never to step on one another's toes when it comes to matters of territory or philosophy, if you want to apply an intellectual bent to it. It has reached my clan my chantry, that this promise <laughs> has a duration, Mr. Melina. Now, I am no historian, but my understanding 
from word that has leaked from within your family is that this was signed in 1528. Long time ago before any of us here were born. And that promise had a five century statute on it. Now that is something that is not widely known, especially not among my clanmates and my broader sect. But what it does mean is that when that promise elapses, there is nothing to stop us from, shall we say, persecuting you with extreme prejudice. And given recent additions to our number, I feel that we would come out victorious in such an endeavour. So, to my mind, to the ma mind of Clan Tremere, it would be more beneficial to the Meliners, and more broadly, whatever your clan is calling itself these days, to stay invested in Ardis Enterprises, maybe increase your investment, and, how to say this without sounding crude, <laughs> bend over for us like we're telling you to. For someone like Raymond Melina, it's not terribly uncommon for you to get up as late as it is right now. <sighs> <sighs> Well, it's before noon, so people should consider themselves lucky that I am. Well, it is the weekend, and every Friday night is a case of burning the candle at both ends. Uh, when you're a big money market player like Ray, well, money's there to burn, and sometimes, just to be vulgar, that's exactly what you do in a bar full of uh, the common rabble. Uh, last night, you can't even remember which bar you were at, and you're not even sure if you were sharing your bed with someone. Uh, if you were, they're gone now. But, woo! Uh, it's certainly taken a toll on your head. Uh, uh. Okay, what's on the agenda for today? Let's see. Well, checking your phone, you can see you have been called around 27 times by one Bryce Lincoln. Oh, Bryce is your nice. business partner. Uh, you both run it, run the company together and have been doing so for the best part of 15 years. You even knew him at university, came up together. And it's pretty uncommon for him to just call and call and call, especially on a weekend. He, he, uh, he plays in his part of town, you tend to play in yours. That's really weird. He's not normally that excitable. Uh, maybe he wrapped his car around a telephone pole. Who knows? I'm not going to call him back right away. I'm going to get up, get the coffee going, have a look at the morning headlines, and then I'll return Bryce's call. You switch the TV on, CNN, usual screed about impeachment trials... Uh, the usual nonsense about diplomatic hell going on abroad in Europe. Blah, blah, blah. It's great for business, though. It's great for business. Oh, yes. Lots of uncertainty. Lots of people investing in your kind of market. And as you can see, the ticker going along the bottom of the screen. Yep, those kinds of stocks going up is exactly what you're after. And the ones going down aren't too bad either, too. Oh, God. Give me a good global financial crisis any day. Whew. You don't feel it's that far off. Your phone starts vibrating. Oh, I check it. Is it Bryce? It is. All right, all right. I'll pick up. Hey, hey, Bryce. What's up? What's the what? Where the fuck have you been? What do you mean, where have I been? It's Saturday morning. Where do you think I've been? I've been calling you since... Since last night, have you not checked your phone? No, why would I? We're closed. There's markets aren't even open until Monday morning. What what the hell's wrong with you? What what's what's wrong with me? Haven't you been? Is it Oh no. I, I we can't talk about it over the phone, Ray. You know what I mean. You you are going to understand what I mean. This is not something we can discuss over the phone. Meet me. 
Meet me at my place. Crap. Okay, okay, okay. Near the marina. M- yeah, meet, yeah. Meet me there. That one. That place, okay? Yeah, f- 40, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, then. You you come as soon as you can. Yeah, bye. Damn it. I know exactly what he means. Not good. Not good at all. Okay. No showering, no shaving. Just clothes, comb through the hair. Hmm. I look around my condo, my very, very expensive condo, suspiciously. What do they know? And how do they know it? Damn. Okay. It's going to take me at least five minutes to get a cab. Marina's at least 35 minutes away. I'll bring my laptop and my little black book with me. That's a good idea. You can stow them away pretty safely. Can I tell what Maria thinks about this conversation? Maybe reading her body language or expression? I think the two of you will have developed enough of a rapport for Maria to be able to broadcast that specifically to you. Maria, what are you broadcasting? That I am awaiting orders. That I also realize that the potential target here is powerful. Mr. Half, these are penetrating observations, to be sure. It's ha, ha, H, A, Mr. Blinner. Not half. I know I am smaller than you, but let us not make this personal. Ah, you know, if the Oscars were this entertaining, I might watch them. Listen, Mr. Ha. Setting up bets that can't fail is a really old game. And my family is very, very good at it. I mean, I just can't get enough of how companies and banks and hedge funds collude to rig securities so that they are designed to fail. You know, the best part is that in order to win these negative bets, we have to market these securities to chumps as if they were pure gold. And the ploy always seems to involve a huge chunk of investment that's at risk. So if the desired outcome is to mitigate that risk and keep the investment something of greater or equal value has to be offered. And right now the value seems to be in question on that collateral. I don't mean to be too obvious, but here it is, right? Like a gym sock on a shower rod. You need to sweeten the deal. (laughs) We're both middle managers, Mr. Melina, no matter how you cut it. Neither of us is going to be able to speak for a clan or sect. But yes, we can sweeten the deal. If you invest... We will reassign our stock to ensure that you, of the family Melina, own 47% of stock in Ardis Enterprises. Not controlling, but close enough. So that should anything happen, we would know the company is in safe hands. Hands that we know have been treated well by us and that one day may wish to repay the favour. So, not only do we benefit from your investment, you benefit from almost entire control of a company. Certainly when it comes to the shareholder meetings, you would carry a lot of sway. Not that you don't already. 47%, Mr. Melina, is higher than anyone is likely to be offered in a legitimate business deal. It will require some very clever selling and for you to move in immediately, but I'm sure we can manage that without it looking like insider trading. 
The problem I always have with diplomacy is that it always sounds so much like condescension. But, in this case, I don't think that's true. It sounds like a very handsome offer. So, I'll shoot another very quick look at Maria. Hopefully, she understands that I'm about to say something that could incite a stronger reaction. No surprises here. Wherever we find these kind of financial situations, we find schemes to move money around the globe. Something else we're very, very good at. 47%, almost a controlling interest. So, Mr. Ha, what do you personally get out of it? if I make this happen. Why, I gain favor among my clanmates and among some mortal associates with whom I still, well, who I still patronize. I was a member of their clique. I am now a member of another. When money changes hands, one could say I benefit in many ways. But this goes beyond the personal. Just like you represent a broader family, I represent a broader clan. This is a deal everyone wants. I'm sure that is not what you've been sent to do, but I have no doubt that when you go back saying you control 47% of Ardus Enterprises, you will be clapped on the back and be told you're a good boy. Hmm. Yeah, that's one of two possible outcomes. Maria, what do you think about all this? Does it seem good to you? Do you fancy being a corporate magnate? Because I'm going to put it in your name if I do this. She tries to hide her surprise. Um, she doesn't know anything about business stuff. It's way above her stature. She is almost an outsider to the family she was brought in she knows that she's supposed to lay down her life or on life on protecting the true family members so she's worried that she's sticking out her neck and most of the things that she's heard has just gone through one ear and then out the other she really doesn't know what this business deal entails, but she knows that she has to protect her employer and kind of looks at him try to see if there are any signals as in like, yes, I want you to go through with this or no, I want you to protest. Would you like me to give the both of you the room, briefly? That's very kind of you. I won't be listening in. I would find the conversation very boring, I am sure. But I will not be far. Please, chat among yourselves. Maria, he says as he passes you by. Hmm. I wasn't expecting you. That will be fed back. And he leaves. You calling ahead for a cab? You're just going to hail for one. Ah, uh, I'll have I'll call down to the doorman. He'll get me one. So what's the point of living in a luxury condo if you don't take advantage of it? You know. Well, exactly, and that just goes to show that Raymond has his priorities right, even while his best friend and longtime colleague is clearly suffering some stress. Well, you know... Doesn't mean you can't indulge, does it? This is, this is probably like that time, you know, where he thought his dog was missing and he just locked it in the bathroom. Well, yeah, he's probably been tying it off as well last night, so... Mm. Who knows, he might be coming down from something. Maybe. Wouldn't be the first time. I've told him to lay off that weird pink shit, but who knows? Who knows? We'll find out. Let's go. The cab is waiting for you when you get down. Uh, you make your way across town. Uh, are you 
opening up your laptop, reviewing what's what while you're on your way. Yeah, and I think uh, I think I'm gonna dump a few things as well. I've got a backup. Let's get him off the laptop. Mm -hmm. Ray doesn't know a lot about technology. He has no idea whether or not deleting certain files is going to save his ass or not, but he thinks it will. What kind of things are you deleting? Certain records of certain transactions. The, um, <laughs> the real estate boom has been a paradise for me. Dirty money goes into con construction, and then when home sales slow and bubbles burst, I profit again by buying up at bargain prices for my clients. Houses that people put on the market that otherwise would have gone unsold. It's not exactly double dipping, but when you use the hedge fund money from questionable sources, it could seem that way. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that makes authorities freeze your books just to have a good route around. Even if they don't find anything, it's enough to slow down business for a day, reputation damage. None of it is the kind of scrutiny you are interested in. Really, really don't want to... I don't want to be a Gordon Gecko example here. No. I better check my bank accounts. Uh, you never know when you may need to move cash around. From what you can see, uh, there's been a large cash withdrawal from your business account this very morning. What the hell? Fifty thousand dollars. Hey, somebody buy a car or what? Well, there's only two people with access to that account without requiring permission, and that would be you. And Bryce. Mm. I don't think I bought anything expensive for my date last night, whoever she was. Um, that's got to be Bryce. You arrive at the marina. You can see Bryce's car is parked there, and in expected fashion, it is parked more abandoned than parked would probably be uh, mm. appropriate, halfway across a parking space. <sighs> Uh, the taxi driver leans out as you get out. Do you need me to wait for you? No, no, no. I'm going to be a while. You uh, you uh, knock yourself out. I'll give him a lavish tip. He got me here fast. Thank you very much, sir. And off he goes. Ah. Bryce has a uh, small white cottage on the marina. Uh, his yacht is docked outside of it. He spends most of his summers here. Uh, very rarely leaves the city but has lots of properties within it with various views and you know this is the place he often comes with his mistress yeah i've never understood it i get seasick on that thing i don't, I don't pass I, I like my high rise i like a good view of the park i like to be able to see across the river you know solid ground hmm besides when the family comes to visit i gotta have a place to entertain my aunts are weird yeah that they are you see him pacing around in the bar, and he looks up to see you've just walked in. Hey, Bryce. <laughs> What's up? What's the what? You look awful. You okay? I told you to lay off that pink shit. It's not... It's not the, not the pink shit, Raymond. Raymond? Ooh. I have been fielding calls from the FBI since last... Night since yesterday evening, as soon as our doors shut, as soon as you went one way and I went the other, I went home to get changed. I got a call from someone claiming to be an FBI agent. I told them to speak to my lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And then, ten minutes later, they were at my front door, Raymond. Huh? What was that all about? Well, he said that he wasn't expecting me. Hmm. Not as well informed as we were led to believe, I guess. Hey, look, I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that, but I was hoping to chase him out or, you know, unsettle him, rattle him, see what he would do. Very well. So what is the plan? That's a good question. This whole thing, I mean, huh. If you're going to inherit something, I've always said, it might as well be money, right? So, plenty of that. Will I gain personally from this? Who knows? It depends on exactly what's going on with this artist enterprises thing. The biggest alarm bell to, to Maria to an extent, to Ray, again, only to a minor one, 
is this talk of the promise. It's largely a a clan specific matter. It isn't discussed beyond it, and certainly very few people in the Camarilla or indeed other sects would even be aware of the details of it, other than to know that Hecata are neutral. That's it. The fact that there's a deadline, uh, an end point to this agreed upon neutrality, is not something a middle manager, Tremere, should know anything about. So the fact that it's being thrown around in conversation for what is ultimately a rather mundane business venture is worrisome. What do we know about this Artist Enterprises company? At a domestic level, it is a national waste management business. It deals with setting up landfills, uh, collecting garbage, uh, and dealing with a whole raft of construction yards and, uh, and scrap yards, things like that. It's by no means glamorous, but it serves many useful purposes for a family such as yours. Uh, Despite the lack of glamour, it's not going to have a skyscraper with its name on the front of it. It's certainly cash-rich. And there's been talk of its international arms dealing in things like materiel for war and certainly less ethical pursuits in poorer countries than the USA. But as far as the average Joe American is concerned, it's the garbage man. A private contractor. They'll take away your dumpsters. And thank goodness for that, right? Because if you have ever seen Wall Street on a Monday morning, very important public service, let me tell you. So, Maria, what do you think about this This whatever he is. He's one of us, right? I mean, not us, but he's of the blood. Definitely. He even dropped it at one point when he was talking about mortals. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a mortal, I didn't really refer to um, my fellow human beings as mortals. Ah, good catch. And uh, he seems to know a little bit about our our family. Yes, he also completely dropped the facade when he mentioned clan, clan Tremere. Yeah, I don't like those guys. I'm neutral, such as the family stance is supposed to be. You're a big help, you know that, right? Well, I was sent here for a purpose, wasn't I? Yeah, same, except uh, apparently I wasn't given the cliff notes. Well, look, if the family has decided this is a bad risk or a bad bet, there's no way that I'm going to you know, reverse the direction of the ship, at least not without instructions or you know, better information. I mean, I learned my lesson. I mean, I really learned my lesson. Uh, unless you think that there's some reason for me to, you know, say yes... I think we gotta decline and get out of here. And then, <laughs> and then we gotta tell the folks upstairs what the hell's going on. You're the business guy, so my advice would be to, since he really, really wants to make a deal, you know, let let the guy down gently. There's a knock on the door, and he walks in. You've been talking to the feds? What did you say? I've not- I've- I've said fuck all to the feds, Ray. Uh, I- I know when to keep my mouth shut, Ray, but the things they've got on me- I wouldn't have let them in, I wouldn't have let them over the threshold, I wouldn't have invited them- But right there, at the door, they started showing me statements. 
statements from not just our, our accounts today, but going back years. And anomalies that I, I just couldn't explain. Now I thought, okay, some of these things are going to be donations from some of our partners. Yeah. Some of these withdrawals are going to be expenses we can write off. But some of the behavior with the investments is very unusual. There are companies that we've invested in I didn't know we'd even touch. And I'm pretty... I scrutinize those books pretty damn closely. So there's been some subterfuge here. Right? And they're saying it's my fingerprints that are all over it. I don't know whether they're trying to shake me down, whether they're trying to get me to speak up, say something, or whether they genuinely believe it's me. But I closed the door on their, in their faces. I went over to my machine. I looked it up. I looked for the things they were showing me just to see whether they were trying to squeeze something out. And they were on the money. Ray. He grabs a bottle of vodka. You can see at one point the glass had some orange juice in it, but he's just drinking vodka straight. At least he's drinking it from a glass. He slams it back. Slams the glass down. Ray. They have got me on a lot. They made it quite clear come the fourth phone call. We, our, our company appears to be siphoning money off to or being siphoned off by various organized criminal outfits. Do you know anyone by the surname Giovanni? Look, Bryce, get a grip. Listen, lawyer up and say nothing. Just because they waved it under your nose on a piece of paper means fuck all. The SEC, if they really had something on you, you'd be in jail already. But you're not. You're walking around free talking to me. Are you... What? Am I what? Are they here? Are they here right now? No, they're not here right now. They're not, they're not, they're not hiding out in the bedroom. You can check. They've not bugged the place or anything like that. It's just me and you, Ray. And... <laughs> Listen, if they, if they had anything substantial, you'd be under arrest. Do you think about that? Advanced fee frauds, offshore scams, pump and dumps... All that stuff is Rico crap, especially if there's, I don't know, what are you saying, the Mafia's involved? That, that, well, that's an Italian name. Yeah. For all I know, they might have been name-dropping it, I don't know. They're fishing, but... they're fishing. Come on, come on. And give me a hit of that. Pour me a glass, will you? Jesus, you got me all worked up. If they had anything, we'd both be under arrest. That's, that's the thing, Ray, they... I said, have you spoken to my business partner about this? What'd they say? God, this is terrible vodka. Where do you buy this? It was from the store on the marina. I just needed to grab something. God, this shit will make your teeth soft. Wow. I asked them, have you spoken to my business partner? And they said, Mr. Molina is not a person of interest in this case. And they made it quite clear that everything they've got is on me. They they said to me, and again, you may be right, they might be just trying to threaten me, might be trying to make me turn something over on you. But they said that this is going to hit me, and if it doesn't hit me, it's going to hit my family, and that I'm going to lose everything, that th this isn't something they're going to be able to keep under wraps. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Ray, and I we have known each other for a very long time, so I want you to be honest. I'm the godfather to one of your nephews. I know. I know. Is all this financial irregularity something you've been doing? Have you been fucking with our company, Ray?
I feel I've given you sufficient time to speak it over. Uh, don't mind me, I won't be sitting. I would like to get this signed and done before midnight, ideally. So what's it to be, Mr. Melina and Maria? Carruthers is looking into you, by the way, a bit of a mystery. What's it to be? One more question, Mr. Ha, yeah, if I may, and thanks very much for your patience. Please. What's the rush? We've got forever, after all. We may have forever, Mr. Melina, but the stock market does not. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? So, the laws and uh, <laughs> anti-laws of supply-side economics notwithstanding, I can appreciate the urgency. But um, as much as I would like to sign, and as much as I would like to help you out... I'm going to interrupt you there, I'm afraid, Mr. Melina. I'm terribly sorry. You are going to buy this stock, whether it's bad, rotten, about to fall off the end of a pier, and you're going to like it, and the Melina are going to eat it. Because if they do not, we know about your little secret, your clan, and how its protected status will soon be up. And right now that is being kept to a very select few. If you do not buy this, it will be known to a whole city, and word will then spread. Man, I hate blackmail if I'm not the blackmailer. I, I mean, I enjoy a little blackmail, but I prefer to be the blackmailer. Your clan has some loose lips in New Jersey. We wouldn't have known this without the Hecata's help. So, what's it going to be? Your money, or quite likely your lives? Will you take a personal check? A, a, a personal check? Yeah, yeah. I know. Hilarious. Show me the contract and give me a pen. He opens a drawer, pulls a contract out, slides it across the desk. We had prepared. I will need to adjust. Uh, I had not anticipated going up to 47%. A little too hasty there, but don't worry, you'll get your full 47 I got a feeling it's going to be either super lonely up on my pedestal or really lonely in my cell. And I don't know which it's going to be yet. I think we'll find out in a night or two. Jersey, you said. That's right. I'll sweeten this deal for you. As you've been so upfront with me, he takes the contract away, snatching it, in fact. Ah, witness. Maria, would you mind signing as a witness? Your birth name would be appreciated. I look over. I can call Carruthers in if you would prefer, but it is often better for the witness to be from outside the company. A nod. Yes. Very well. I sign it with my name. Hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. You have done me a favour, Mr. Melina. You're keeping me in with a job. So I will do a favour for you. And then we are back to being the best of friends. I'm not going to have to send back limbs or anything like that. Yes. Your family has a... Has loose lips in Atlantic City. Someone has been talking about some of your internal clan business. We've heard all kinds of interesting things among the Tremere. But you're fortunate that it was not heard, it was not picked up on by some errant Torrid or Nosferatu. We know how to keep secrets, because they benefit us for them to remain secrets. But we have this one now. I find that... The only way to fight the devil is with the devil's tools, and I haven't had a vacation in a while. Atlantic City, boardwalk, ocean air, casinos, a lot of money changing hands illegally. Sounds like someplace uh, I could uh, really enjoy. Well, whatever you decide to do with the remainder of your time, I wish you the best of luck. Carruthers will see you out. Good night, Mr. Ha. Pleasure doing business with you. Ah, pleasure was mine. He shakes your hand. If you take his. Absolutely. 
No need to be rude. He goes to shake Maria's. I give him a firm shake back. And you depart. Not the way you mean, no. What, what way have you been fucking with it? Oh god, this is really the worst vodka ever. Fuck the vodka? <sighs> um, look. I have problems of my own. Pressures of my own that you can't possibly imagine. Do you remember... <laughs> you remember when we got out of um, the MBA program, uh... I invited you over for the party my family threw for me when I got that degree, and you met. Um, I introduced you to some of my my aunts and my uncles. You know my parents are, are gone, but they're my family. I remember. Yeah. Um, so, education's not free, you know? It doesn't come cheap. And, uh, you know, maybe I bought a few shares of very low-priced stock from a small, thinly traded company, and then maybe I sort of spread some information to drum up interest in the stock and increase the price, and you know, maybe I sold shares at higher prices, and then, you know, maybe somebody, maybe somebody, I don't know who, maybe they dumped their shares at the high price, and then a lot of people got caught with worthless shares of stock. You know, he collapses into an easy chair, holding his hat and on his head, like the bottom has just fallen out of his world. I'm sorry, I never meant for you. I never meant. I never meant. Uh, you let me partner with you. You've been doing this for Christ knows how many years. Yeah, and look how rich you got. You didn't seem to complain when it was all Lamborghinis and cocaine and fancy parties and free trips to the Bahamas. And you thought it was because you were a financial genius? Ah. Ha! Give me a break. You're not that smart, Bryce. You never were. You, you, you used me as, what, a, a patsy, a clean front man, a... Someone to take the hit when it all goes south like it is right now. The more important thing is how do they find out and what do they really know? Because if they really knew, you would be in jail. And so would I. The, the, the important thing. That's the important thing. Focus on the important thing, Bryce. How did they find out anything and what do they really know? I... Look, I'm sorry. I've loved you like a brother. Hell, you are... You're my brother. You, we've been through, we've been through good times and bad times. It, I don't feel like less of a man to say that we've cried on each other's shoulders more than once. And this is just about the worst thing you could have done to me. I've sunk my life into this, into you, and your. At least, I guess, at least you're coming clean now that I'm asking you. But it's taken the FBI knocking on my door. Uh, Do you remember that trip to Buenos Aires? Do you remember how much fun that was when we learned to tango? And... Do you remember that? Yeah. Ray, I remember that. You remember that meeting we had with those investors? and the presentation we made, and how eager they were to buy in. Yeah, back then we were just using PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know that, you know, companies like ours are exempt from registering securities with the SEC if they're sold exclusively outside to foreign offshores, offshore investors. You knew that. You had to know that. I guess... I guess I... You didn't want to see it, did you? You were happy to live large. 
off work you didn't do. So now... No, I'm going to get you out of this. I'm not going to let you go down. Yeah. They don't have anything solid. I know they don't because you're not in handcuffs. You're not in front of a judge. So we're going to get out of this. <laughs> he stands up. You're, you're probably right. Ray, this is just a... A smudge. Uh, this doesn't change anything. You're... St- I still love you, you're still the best guy I ever knew. And I don't know what that says about all the guys I've known, but... Yeah, we've we've done alright. And that trip to Buenos Aires, <laughs> business meetings aside, was... Uh, whew, well, we got up to some, some shit. I'm gonna... I'm gonna cling on to that. Uh, yeah, that excuse was... me for excuse me for a sec. I I really need to yeah change my shirt. Mm-hmm. He heads off into his bedroom. Ah, this is the worst possible thing ever. While he's in his bedroom, I'm going to uh, start dumping files off my phone as well. Certain numbers I can get later. Uh, some files a couple of photographs of people I would rather not be found there's a mixture of excitement and nausea as you're deleting the evidence there's the pleasant feeling of nostalgia seeing some of those photos but also the fear of well how far do you need to go to clean up this trail of dirty deeds and just as you're wondering the depths you might need to go to and who in the family you might need to reach out to to make sure that this kind of thing is truly scrubbed clean you hear the unmistakable sound of a handgun going off in the bedroom drop the phone a race for the bedroom door Bryce is laying on his bed quite peaceful the gun is still in his right hand but his right hand is dropped to the pillow beside his head no 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 you know this man may be the only person who was a true friend to you someone who would trust you implicitly with everything and as his blood escapes the hole in the side of his skull You know that you may never have a relationship like this again with any man, with any person. And you realize you're going to have to clean up your very appearance here. You're going to have to make sure there is no evidence of your ever having been with Bryce today. And you're going to have to get in touch with some members of your family that you've not had to speak to for a very long time. My aunt is going to kill me. She's going to kill me. Shit. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Family, a Cults of the Blood Gods chronicle for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Cults of the Blood Gods is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing and is on Kickstarter right now. Our storyteller was the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins, and we were also joined by Jason Carl, Clara Herbel, and Bianca Savazzi. The music was created by Atrium Carceri, featuring many collaborations with other artists from their label, Cryo Chamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com and their YouTube channel for more amazing dark ambient. If you want more Vampire the Masquerade content, don't miss out on our chronicles No Man is an Island, as well as The Sacrifice for Chicago by Night. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, and David for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. 
You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Infinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon again.